It's a natural disaster on a shocking scale, with heavy rain causing rivers to burst their banks, whole streets ripped away by the floodwaters, houses collapsed, livelihoods destroyed. More than 160 people have lost their lives. At least we're alive. There are so many dead. It's unbelievable. You can't begin to imagine what happened here. Such freak weather events are unusual in Germany. But despite the shock, communities are coming together, united in their efforts to tackle the disaster. The Mies family have never known anything like it. They've spent days in the mud, trying to salvage what they can from the ground floor and cellar of their house in the town of Walpurzheim. The property has been devastated by flooding from the Ahr. Normally a small river, it was turned into a raging torrent by days of heavy rain. It destroyed everything in its path. If it rains heavily in autumn or there's meltwater, it can get a bit wild. The river rises very quickly, then drops right back down again. But what's just happened is inconceivable. The furniture and the drinks and everything from the cellar are strewn across the neighborhood. The water is finally receding, leaving behind mud, debris and a trail of destruction. On the night of the flood, Klaus Mies was most concerned about his five children. The situation got critical when the water forced its way into the ground floor. Mies was able to carry a disabled child to safety upstairs, only just in time. I came down and heard the water rushing through the yard. Then I saw it shooting out of the drains in fountains a meter high. The whole drainage system was overflowing. It all filled up so fast. The cellar and ground floor were flooded, and the building back there, where I have my office. This is what's left of the office. There's no way the building engineer can work here. In any case, the area has no power. We'll have to tell our clients that we need to put jobs on hold. We can't do anything. The computers are down. We'll try to get IT people to save the hard drives. But we'll just have to see what happens. There were warnings of heavy rainfall. But many say these weren't urgent enough. People in Walpurzheim were among those caught by surprise. The streets are piled high with ruined furniture, carpets, household items. Only heavy-duty vehicles can get through. Volunteers are scrambling to clear the mud before it dries and hardens. The tranquil river R has shown it's also capable of ripping out tree trunks and bringing down bridges. Farah David only moved into her house a few months ago. Now her new home and her investment are in ruins. We'd refurbished everything and put on an extension. Everything was newly done, underfloor heating, tiling, bathroom, kitchen, all new. And then came the flood. We didn't even have time to save our things. Nearly everything affected by the flood will have to be thrown out. Trucks will take the debris away. Cleanup is complicated by the fact that in many areas there's no cell phone coverage. The flooding was nearly all in Western Germany, 
in Rhineland Palatinate and parts of North Rhine-Westphalia. Later, it also affected the south. In Schönau, on the Königsee Lake, an entire hillside was swept away. The country's technical relief agency, as well as the police and the army, have all been brought in. But some say the emergency response has been chaotic. There's no organization. No one's taking responsibility. We've been left alone to fend for ourselves. The fire service is only responsible for rescues. There are no police at all. I did see an armoured car yesterday, but there's no official presence. Nothing. In contrast, there's no shortage of volunteers. And not all of them are locals. Some have travelled hundreds of kilometres to help out. Others are from neighbouring towns. We're from Landershofen, higher up than Aweiler, in the same district. We were spared. It did rain, but that was all. It didn't come into people's houses. We know from previous years that there can be serious flood damage. So we thought, let's go down to Neuenahr and Aweiler and see how it looks, and see whether we can help out. I actually feel better down here because up there at home I can't get the images out of my head. It's just crazy. It's better to be down here where at least you can help as much as you can. Wald Porzheim was badly hit. And things were just as grave in the village of Schult, also on the Ahr. An aerial view shows the scale of the devastation. The river coils right around the village. On the night the rains came, it tightened like a noose around this community of 660 people. Houses washed away, Cars scattered like toys, mud and wreckage everywhere. Now residents try to deal with the damage to their homes and businesses. The mood is edgy. If you don't have disaster insurance, then you've had it. It'll all just have to come down and that's that. Not everyone is being allowed back into their houses. Those who are, often find themselves in shock. Now they must start to deal with the aftermath of the flooding. This was a car repair shop, a family business, a lifetime's investment, all gone. Tanja Huperich Zalfen is helping her brother to salvage what he can. This is what's left of my brother's workshop. He's lost nearly everything. There's no more work. He'll just have to start from scratch. There's dejection, but also anger. Anger at the politicians who rushed to the areas hit by the flooding. Emotions are running high. If they're bringing shovels and buckets and brooms with them to help, that's OK, but if they've just come to gawk, then they should stay away. It's a dilemma for Chancellor Angela Merkel and the other politicians who visited the disaster zones. They know that electioneering will not go down well with people who've been struck by devastation. They also don't want to get in the way of emergency services, but if they stay away, people will say they're too fancy to get their hands dirty. At the end of the day, political leaders have to show their faces in the affected areas to offer both help and encouragement.
The federal and state governments are right behind you. We'll work together to put things right in this beautiful region. Authorities are promising to make hundreds of millions of euros available, with affected families getting an initial payment of three and a half thousand euros. That money is badly needed in Walpurzheim. A few days on from our first visit, and the cleanup operation is going well. Clean water is rinsing away the dirt, and the streets are at least partly free of mud. The coronavirus kept people apart over the last year, but the flooding has brought them back together. Cleanup crews are on site. The volunteers are still working tirelessly. Some of the debris has been cleared from the streets. The cellars have been pumped out and people's houses are dry. That's a big step forward. Everyone's really pleased about that. The Mies family, too, are beginning to catch their breath. This stuff here we're going to try to reuse. That's after we give it a good clean. So we're hoping to get running water and, of course, electricity back. Then maybe we can salvage it. The cleanup is a massive job for the family. They haven't managed to tackle the rear building yet. The water was up to this level here, so it's all gone. I just looked into the cupboard. It's almost comical. I'm a pretty tidy person. And everything is in its place, underwater. You get the idea. At least the barbecue is still working. And they found some frozen meat in the cellar. They may have lost a great deal in this disaster, but they're thankful for what they still have. <laughs>